Today I want to talk about the Polaroid Lab. This thing is super cool. It gets overlooked a lot by Polaroid shooters and other instant photographers. But I want to address some of the things you can do with this that you can't do with any other Polaroid item out there. Let's dive into it. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. Welcome in. Let's dive into this and let's talk about the features of this before we dive into some fun creative things and hacks you can do with it. Uh, and to really explain it, it's a phone printer in a sense, but it differs from most because it takes a picture of your phone screen. It's an actual camera which we'll touch on in just a few minutes, but you pop it open, there's a little button here on the side and it opens up just like that. And then you uh, use your phone and you run through the app and then you set it all up, place your phone on the top, you wait for a little ding and then you press the button and then it takes an image and spits it out and then you've got yourself a photo from your phone. That's what it's intended for. That is the main functionality of it. And a lot of people give this thing a bad rep. Active photographers and the professionals, if you will, of instant photography, the ones I've talked to, don't use this. They shun it out of the way and they don't want to be associated with it and have people think that their photos are fake. And I think it's stupid, but again, I won't really dive into that. Other than who cares, it's art is art, but whatever. So you just load in uh, iType or 600 film into it and it just operates like a normal you know, Polaroid camera essentially. Um, but what you can actually do is a few little hacks. Uh, up here at the top, you'll notice that there are these little dots and a little sensor right here. This sensor aligns the phone. So when you place your phone on there, uh, these are little pressure activated sensors. So it knows to register that there's something on top of it, which activates this little sensor. And then this sensor communicates with your phone to align things up. And then once you get a little ding, you can you know take your photo. But something you can actually do, if you press your finger down on this, and it's gonna flash. Now it stopped flashing. I could technically, I can actually take a photo without the phone on there. Which means you can do some macro shots with this. It can be very tricky to do. I, feel, I was just doing it outside, but I was able to do some inside with some surprising results. Focusing it obviously is a huge challenge. You have to make sure you're on the same plane as the uh, your phone screen would be. So you have to get right up in there and make sure you have enough light uh, to take the photo. That's why I suggest outside. Now, I don't really use it for that. It's just an idea that was uh, inspired by Dave Knopp from Knoptop. We did a live stream not too long ago using, um, what was that thing called? The Key Picks. I'll leave a link for it in the description below if you want to check it out. Um, but he was able to, that phone printer for Insax Mini into a macro camera, super easy to do anyone can do it i enjoy doing it but it's super fun um so i thought i could try it with this and it did work so you can use it for that but at the end of the day i don't use it for that i what i've been using it for is to create things i wouldn't normally be able to create on instant film so i have two examples for you now if you're a long time viewer you may know i do live streams and i sometimes have guests come on and i like to have pictures with my guests that i can you know stick up on the wall and whatnot and i want to do that with polaroid to do that well, uh, well it's a little difficult so what you can do is one you could take a photo of them with your camera of your screen and that has some moderate success you can definitely do that but what i'll go do is i'll go and just take a screenshot of the interview and then just print it out on the lab like here are just a couple of the ones i've had my uh, we've got Jake Medosic, we've got Jason Lusk, uh, super cool, Charles Babbage, and then Dave Knopp. These are just some of the ones I've had on my show, and it's cool to immortalize them as guests here, and I love to do it on instant film, and I wouldn't be able to do that otherwise uh, without this, essentially. At least effectively, like I said, you could take a picture of your screen, but it's mm, I've tried that, especially with Dave that day. It didn't work very well. It's all distorted and funky looking. It just doesn't do a good job that's where this thing shines. Now, another creative way that I've been using this is to create prop replicas, I guess. A a anyone that knows me knows I tend to like things that don't exist. <laughs> so I tend to try and create them myself. 
And I'm a big fan of the show Parks and Recreation. And if you've been following my uh, Instagram recently, you have already seen this. But I was watching the show and I happened to see a Polaroid in an episode where uh, Ron Swanson is showing all of his meals that he has had at Mulligan Steakhouse. And he, he showed his very first photo of him going there and it, was hap it happened to be on a Polaroid. Now, side note, I'm pretty sure they faked the Polaroid. It's not real for the show. That was just something that they printed out or something because uh, it does look slightly off, but I wanted to have that for myself. So what I did was, is I went back on my computer and pulled it up in a uh, higher resolution took a screen grab, brought it into Photoshop, trimmed it up, exported it out, got the colors to where they were a little bit more saturated and a little less contrast because it's going on Polaroid film. Uh, and so I took that, transferred it uh, to my phone, put it through the app and then printed it out. And now I have a prop, prop if you will, replica from <laughs> the, the show of Ron Swanson, aka Nick Offerman, uh, his first meal at the Mulligan Steakhouse. I just think it's kind of a fun, unique thing. There's a few other Polaroids throughout the show that I'm actually going to try and do the same thing, but they're going to be a little more difficult. The quality that they've shown is a little grainy and don't know if I can make it happen, but I was able to do this one to my surprise, really, really high quality. I did not expect it to come out this good, but I wouldn't have been able to achieve this without the Polaroid Lab. I've never sent fan mail to anyone, ever, <laughs> just never have. But how cool would this be to be like signed by Nick Offerman? I don't think this has ever been done before. And I'm tempted to like try and track down like a fan mail system and mail this to him and see if he'll sign it. <laughs> I've never done that before. I've just, but it would be really cool. So if I, if that happens, I think I am going to do it. I, I will share that story with you guys over on, uh, in the members section. So if you want to follow that journey, um, consider, you know, consider joining up. The thing about Polaroid is it's art, right? It's photography and it's always subjective and there's no wrong way of doing it. And the Polaroid Lab gets a lot of flack for its existence, um, at least in the communities that I've uh, been a part of and chats that I've had with other photographers in the Polaroid world, they think this thing is a freak of nature. And I just don't understand why people are so a little narrow-minded and closed off to the idea of utilizing another tool to be creative. Think maybe people are worried they're gonna be judged that their photos are fake. Now, I get where some people are frustrated with thinking their photos are fake and using the Polaroid Lab. For instance, this is my first photo in the monthly print club over on Patreon, uh, and I included a Polaroid photo, and it is Iron Giant, and this thing came out so good. People think it's fake that you can't actually pull a shot off like this on a Polaroid. And that is not true. And I did have to defend myself a few times. I get where people think that's frustrating. And I don't really find it frustrating. If people don't believe me, they don't believe me. That's totally fine. Um, I know how I shot it. And I guess that's the only thing that matters. I don't know. But photos are photos. Art is art. And I thought this was a really sweet photo. And I wanted to include it in the very first ever monthly print club photo. So at the end of the day, do I recommend this? Yeah. I recommend you picking one of these up. Absolutely. It is a great tool to have in your arsenal if you are trying to be creative with whatever you're doing. It has come in handy on so many different occasions. Being able to just make a copy of some photos for friends, that it's a great thing to do that with. Who cares if you didn't shoot it on an actual Polaroid? If you do care about that, that is absolutely your right as well. Like I said, there's no wrong way about art. This has been an interesting video. <laughs> um, I just wanted to share some ex my experiences. This isn't really a review, it's just more of an explanation and hopefully maybe it helps you be more creative yourself. And you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And get out there, make some freaking art. I'll see you later.